Hi, I am Dr. Leif Smith, and today I want to talk to you about three cool ways, three maybe unorthodox ways, that you can fight your anxiety. Who am I? And why are you listening to me? Why'd you click on this video, right? Well, let me explain a little bit about why I might know what I'm talking about. I'm Dr. Leif Smith, and I'm a clinical psychologist, and I've been practicing 20 years. I've seen thousands of people from all walks of life. I am also a sports psychologist, and I've worked with some of the best athletes in the world, and the best programs and teams, universities in the world, to help them improve performance. Along the way, I've written a book, which I'm also redoing. I'm coming out with the second edition of Sports Psychology for Dummies, which will be out in January 2022. And so I've had a lot of experience in helping people get over anxiety. And that's why I'm here today to record this short video to help you. And I hope this touches your life in a deep way. But I'm here to help you get over your anxiety. So let's talk a little bit. I'm sure you have an idea of what anxiety feels like to you. But I just want to define it from my end so that you know what I'm talking about. I look at it as I look at anxiety, excuse me, as excessive thinking. We think too much. I always tell people, this is a smart person disease. Dumb people don't overthink things. I'm sorry, but that's how it is. Think about the dumbest person you know in your friend group. They probably don't get very anxious. Why? Because anxiety is simply unchecked thinking. Your thoughts are running the show. It's like, The kids, the teenagers, having a party, and there's no parent at home to tell them what's right, what's wrong, what's acceptable, what time the party should be over, and so on and so forth. So anxiety is overthinking. Your thoughts are just running the show all the time. And the thing is, every thought that you have has a physical and physiological component to it. And what that means is every time you have a thought, you have a reaction in your body. If you have a thought that makes you feel happy, we can measure what that feeling is like all the way down to your blood and your cells. So don't uh, misunderstand what I'm trying to say here. It's very important. Your thinking has serious consequences. And so now that you understand anxiety, at least how I'm defining it, I want to give you three cool tips. And these might be different than what you're expecting, but they are three tips that are going to help you fight anxiety. First cool tip, number one, I want you to try to think like a scientist. What does that mean? Well, scientists are driven by data. Data drives the decision making. Whether a drug works or not is determined by the data, not by your idea of what should happen. This is why we do experiments, right? This is why scientists when they come up with conclusions, it's based on data. It's not based on their own opinion. That's good, sound science. Well, if you think like a scientist, you're going to start looking for data. Data can prove or disprove your own initial quote-unquote hypothesis. So maybe you have the thought, nobody likes me. Let's wait and see what the data says. And you might go out and say, Hey, yeah, some that person looked at me weird. See, that means they don't like me. And that other person didn't hold the door for me when I was obviously struggling with a bag of groceries. So that's two uh, pieces of evidence right there that prove that nobody likes me. Wrong. Would that hold up in a court of law as evidence? Or is that just you assuming that it's evidence? Evidence that nobody likes you would be you have no friends, you've never had a friend, And you will never have a friend in the future. That's some pretty solid evidence that nobody likes you. But the other stuff, that's just you mislabeling something as data. It's your own hypothesis, and you go out and you find things that prove your own hypothesis. So if you want to think like a scientist, you're going to wait for the evidence. And you need a lot of it to prove your hypothesis. So the conclusions are going to be based on reality, if you think like this, not theory. So I always tell my clients, 
where's the proof? Where's the evidence that nobody likes you? Where's the evidence that you're no good at anything? Where's the evidence to prove or disprove that thought that uh, life is hard and it's never going to get better? I know what's going to happen. You're not going to have real data on that. So if you don't have data on it, that thought now gets discarded. When we think like a scientist, we start basing our thoughts in reality. We have proof for how we're feeling the way we're feeling. Coolness tip number two. This one is way out there. Cold showers. Now, before you run away and click off this video, I'm going to tell you, cold showers are a powerful mechanism physiologically. They are so good for you physically. But I like them because they are mental. What do I mean by that? Well, if you haven't taken a cold shower, go try one today and you'll see what I'm talking about. They are a mental experience, a mental exercise in distress tolerance. Can you tolerate the cold water cascading down your body? Sounds easy enough until you get in the shower and it hits you. Cold showers are about standing there, taking it, and slowing your breathing down and being able to tolerate something that's uncomfortable. We've got to realize, too, cold showers do have physical benefits to them at the biological level. Cold showers over time help you lower your heart rate. I've seen some studies that say 10 to 15% lower over time when you take cold showers, which means your heart's not working as hard, it's not having to pump as much, and it's not going to be as tired. Your heart is a muscle. If we can make it not work as much, that's a good thing. Lowered blood pressure is also one of the benefits of cold showers. Lowered inflammation. Inflammation is the cause of all physical disease. So if we can lower that at any level, just through taking cold showers from time to time, that's a good thing. And here's one that a lot of people like, better metabolism. Metabolism speeds up because your body, after a cold shower, has to start learning how to warm itself better. So it starts heating up. Now, why is this a tip to combat anxiety? Well, a lot of anxiety is it's worrying about things that are never going to happen and they never come to be. So we have a thousand thoughts about how bad life is going to be today and how bad the conversation is going to be and how bad the interview is going to go. And then it doesn't go that way. And then we move on and we try to ruin something else by overthinking it, right? Cold showers are exercises in standing in there, not panicking, calming down, and staying in the moment. All you need is a five-minute cold shower to start getting physical benefits. I think you get much more in terms of mental benefits and you learn that I can handle anything. Especially when you get out of that shower, you feel pretty good. It's a very good way to start your day. Coolness tip number three. Okay, I want you to learn how to drive your car with your car being your nervous system. If you look at your nervous system, the gas pedal, the thing that makes it go is the sympathetic nervous system. This is the fight or flight part of our nervous system. The brake, on the other hand, we call that the parasympathetic nervous system. This is the part of the nervous system that wants us to relax and recover. Rest and digest, we talk about. So we've got fight or flight and rest and digest. And we want these parts of our nervous system to be in balance, just as you would when you're driving a car. You don't want to just hit the gas pedal all the time. You need to slow down from time to time when you see a stop sign or a red light. The same is true in life. You don't want to be hitting the gas pedal all the time. That is going to make your anxiety worse. So you need to develop use of the brakes and the parasympathetic nervous system. You need to have a balance between gas and brake if you're going to feel better. And if you can do this, you're going to feel much less anxious. And the thing about practicing the brakes, how do we do that? By taking time away, by working on breathing, breathing, slow, deep breathing, where you take inhales for instance, to the count of six, and you exhale to the count of 12. 
and do that six times in a row. Research shows this actually starts kicking in your parasympathetic nervous response. It starts kicking in the vagus nerve, which is the main nerve in terms of the parasympathetic nervous system response. Once you do that, once you start practicing your breathing, you get better at resting and digesting. You get better at slowing things down. You get better over time at pumping the brakes and not feeling out of control. Make sense? Very important. Learn how to use your brake pedal just as much as you learn to use the gas pedal. What now? You've watched me for 10 minutes so far, so what now? Here's the first thing. I want you to make a choice to be more aware of your anxiety and when it pops up and what it sounds like and what you're going to do about it. If you're aware of the damage you're doing, you can start changing it. And I want you to practice. I want you to practice these skills. Maybe choose one of my tips. Maybe the cold showers are not for you, but you can start practicing the deep breathing, for instance. Maybe that's one. Or maybe you like the idea of thinking like a scientist more than the other two tips. It doesn't matter to me. I'm offering you three tips. You can use all of them or just one. But practice. Practice, practice, practice. And I want you to focus on progress. Things aren't going to get better overnight, but if they gradually get better, that's good. So a little bit of progress over a little bit of time and a little bit of patience, you're going to feel better with your anxiety. I promise you that. Thank you for watching today. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, please leave a comment. That's always helpful to me and that helps others see this video so that they can get some benefits from it too. Again, I'm Dr. Leif Smith and I help people get better, be better, and do better. And I will see you in the next video.